today on one of Tennessee's state scenic rivers, the Roaring River, in Jackson County, just outside of Gainesboro, to work on removing the dam on Roaring River. The dam is on Corfee property. TWRA has a real estate out grant for some of the properties on Cordell Hall Lake, including this fish barrier dam area. They submitted a request to remove the dam and the Corps evaluated it under uh, NEPA, National Environmental Policy Act, uh, to determine the environmental effects of removing the dam. Dams have several effects on rivers, the first being that they change the natural structure of the river from a free-flowing habitat to more of a, a still water lake type habitat. And that changes the type of species that can actually survive there. On top of that, it changes the, the flow of nutrients and energy through the river. So the sediment that's transported downstream also carries food and nutrients that feed everything downstream. And when you block that with the dam, it changes the quality of habitat and the health of species downstream. There's over 2,000 dams like this around the state. A lot of them, like this one, have kind of outlived their useful purpose. And there's real opportunity to increase the safety of the rivers and expand habitat. So when we realized that they were considering whether or not to uh, repair the dam or remove it, we started to go out and look for funding to make sure that this was a removal and habitat restoration project. In the past probably five or six years, we've seen two or three dams a year coming out. And what we're really trying to do is increase the scope and pace of those removals. What we've done is inventory nearly 2,000 dams around the state and try and prioritize those that have the highest potential to improve wildlife habitat and where there's community support, either because the dam's failing or it represents a safety hazard or it's no longer serving its intended purpose. Lowhead dams have safety issues just as they are in that they form a hydraulic that at certain flows that are dangerous for boaters or swimmers or anybody to be in. And the way this one had, had started to break up was forming kind of an upstream wedge, which is even more dangerous once you get the right flows on it. The dam has been here since 1976. In 2011, uh, a head cut or a, a notch began to develop in the dam and caused us to evaluate what we were gonna do with this, with this site and determined that it would probably be a good thing to go ahead and take the dam out. It was originally built to limit reservoir species from moving up out of Cordell Hole Reservoir into Roaring River. And there's a lot of species that have evolved to really need to move up and downstream over the course of their life cycle. They may go upstream to spawn and lay eggs, or they may need a lot of interaction between populations to keep the, the genetic diversity of a species strong. You know, it really has marginally performed as a barrier. Uh, a lot of the species that, that it was intended to limit are upstream of the dam. And as well, our management philosophy has changed somewhat in that some of the species that originally were the, the ones that they wanted to limit, species like smallmouth bass, get stopped here at the dam. You have several species of fish that are migratory. Red horse species will come up to this dam and kind of be stopped, and they're a, a, a sucker-like fish, um, but a very important part of the ecosystem. It's limited their moving up into the river. Species like white bass, possibly sauger. Another species that we're kind of interested in is the eastern hellbender. It's uh, our, one of our largest salamanders in the state. Range-wide, numbers have dropped for this species. Um, we have found them upriver, and we found them down in the reservoir. So I think there's a real good chance that we're restoring some connectivity for a species like that. Ecologically, we're going to see a benefit from removing this dam. What you'll see is a return to kind of the, the, the natural structure of a river where you have riffles, runs, and pools instead of one large pool behind it. So it essentially almost immediately transforms the river from a lake habitat back to a flowing river habitat. And that increases the, the different types of habitat where different species like to live. It also increases or improves the nutrient flow through the river, the quality of the water, the dissolved oxygen content, and, 
and purity of the water. So you see a lot of different improvements. Another aspect of it is that it's created a pretty serious safety hazard. So removing it helps in a lot of ways. Removes the safety hazard, restores connectivity in the river. Dam removal is actually one of the more cost-effective ways to do river restoration. And when you add on top of that the, the human, the public safety aspect of it, it's an incredibly cost-effective project in the long term. You can restore miles and miles of streams relatively quickly with one single project. One of the questions that we've, that we've had from the local people in, about this project was, well, how far upstream is the influence of this uh, removal gonna, gonna be seen? Um, we, don't, we don't expect to see much of a difference more than a mile upstream. Um, that'll be about the extent of the difference. And the farther up you go in, in that mile upstream, the less you're gonna see. Most of the difference is gonna be within a half a mile of the dam. And so you're gonna have uh, a gravel bar and some kind of pool that forms down here. It'll still be a great place to fish, It'll be a great place to swim. It'll just be a lot safer and you'll be able to pull boats straight through and take boats out and um, it'll just be a, a better site for, for people to use. Over the past two or three years, there have been one or two dams like this that come out every year, and our goal is to get that up to 15 or 20 a year. We've been actively surveying dams around the state, and anyone who's interested in uh, participating in a dam removal or has a dam that they think would be a good candidate for removal can contact the Tennessee chapter of the Nature Conservancy.